There we go. Hey, everyone. How's it going out there? All righty. So let me go ahead and pop this one down. Okay. So uh, Uncle Al is not going to be joining me tonight. Um, he had another funeral to go to. Um, and just to let everybody know, I'm in California right now, so I don't have my normal computer set up. So I'm looking over here to read the chat on this side. And I just got a small screen up here. I don't have my multiple, you know, the big screen I usually have to watch and read and everything on here in front of me. All righty. So let's uh, do a quick roll call and see who all has come on in here. All right. First one in was Michael58. Hey, Michael. Cecilia Jansen. Courtney at Wide Family Farm. The Lala Farm. Yeah, Howie, Food Forest Permaculture up there in Victoria Island. All righty. So tonight's, uh, let's go and make that bigger there. There we go. So tonight's topic is the, uh, I always mispronounce it, Persades uh, Meteor Shower. And uh, the reason I put the question of how dangerous is it, because I've seen several channels thrown out there. Oh, it's going to be really bad. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. And it's like, uh, gee, wow. Time to set the record straight. So, guys, um, let me go ahead down here and get to the next one here. Let's get a little information on um, this meteor shower and what it's about. And so, all right, Mercedes Meteor Shower. The, uh, uh, I'm really like getting tongue tied here. Etymology on it is the name is derived from the word per se, per se, and I pronounce it. I hope someone else that I can pronounce it. Basically, it means the sons of Perseus in Greek mythology. All right. All right, and it is a prolific meteor shower associated with the comet Swiss, uh, Swift Dash Tuttle. Now, a lot of channels were harping on that. Oh, it's a pro prolific meteor shower. It's going to be a lot of stuff coming down. It's going to be hitting the earth and doing all sorts of screwy stuff. Um, uh -uh. There may be a lot of meteors coming down, but the vast, vast, vast majority of them burn up way to, way before they get close to uh, um, hitting the ground. Okay, so uh, basically it's a stream of debris called the Perse uh, Perseid uh, cloud and stretches along the orbit of the swift tuttle comet. Uh, the cloud consists of particles ejected by the comet as it travels on its, on its 133 year orbit. So that's how long, it, every 133 years, it goes around the sun. Now, I don't know if everybody out there remembers their, uh, their science and stuff, but comets and stuff, the tail of the comet always points away from the sun. That's because of the energies coming off the sun, the particles, the cosmic gases, everything else forces the um, particles away from the comet. And the comet puts out a lot more the closer it gets to the sun. All right, where's my? There we go. Now, most of the particles that have been part of the cloud in our solar system have been around for thousands of years. All right, they've just been hanging out there. They're caught between the uh, gravitational pull and the uh, their. Um, orbit and stuff that tries to pull them away. Anyways, they're pretty much stationary, most of them are, until the Earth passes through the cloud. All right. There is also, there was also a relatively, you know, relatively young uh, filament of dust in the stream that was pulled off the comet when it passed in 1865. So, um, and so basically what that does is like uh, for tonight, it'll give you an, uh, an extra early and last night, extra early you know, mid uh, mini peak of the day before the, ma uh, the maximum shower hits. Right. The, the, the dimensions of this cloud 
is <laughs> yeah, Keith. The sky's falling. The sky's falling. <laughs> hey, uh, CNJ's Oregon Homestead. All right. So uh, the dimensions of this cloud in the vicinity of Earth's orbit is estimated to be approximately um, 0 0.1 astronomical units, which is an AU, which is the distance from the Earth to the sun. That's an AU. So it's a tenth of that. That's how, how it is, how wide it is across. And it is 0.8 or it's, uh, eight tenths of the distance to the sun. That's how uh, long it is in the Earth's orbit. So basically the orbit's like this. It's eight tenths of an AU this way, and it's wide is one tenth of an AU. All right. So yeah, just call, yeah, just call me. Uh, um, oh, forget it. I was gonna say, uh, what's his name that they used to do all the science shows on it. Anyways, oh, Ryan the gamer's in here. Hey, Ryan. Um. All right. Uh, Keith, answer to your question here about Uncle uh, Uncle Al or uh, Will. Uncle Al notified me today that he had had another funeral in his small town to go to today. And uh, Will's taking it easy for a while, um, doctor's orders. So hopefully he will rest up really good, and then he'll be back with us here in a couple weeks. All righty. Um, so back here. So the shower is visible from mid-July. That's when you just have just little inklings of it, little one here, a couple hours, one there. And then... Um, and it peaks up with the, and usually the peak is between uh, August 9th to August 14th, depending on the particular location of the stream and dealing with our orbit. Because remember, we pick up a day every four years, have to add in a day in there, and sometimes they'll, they'll wobble and everything. Anyways, so um, in general, though, on the chart, I'll show you guys later. It's it hits a lot of time between more often between, uh, on the 11th, 12th, or 13th. All right. During this peak uh, peak period here, which is tonight and tomorrow night, the rate of meteors reaches 60 or more per hour. Ooh, so you're out there during the, watching it. You can, you can count, you know, like, you know, basically one a minute you'll see these coming in. Sometimes you'll get a whole bunch and you'll have a couple minutes of nothing. Um. Now, however, because of the showers are uh, radiant in the constellation of uh, uh, Perseus, they're primary, primarily visible in the northern hemisphere. Because I'll show you in one of the pictures, they're showing you where the where Polaris or the North Star is, and where uh, uh, Pleiades is, or where the constellation Perseus is located, and how the uh, per Perse Perseides uh, meteors come out of it. So I got a lot of good, good pictures here for you guys coming up here. As with many meteors, meteor showers, the vis visible rate is greatest during the pre-dawn hours. And uh, some of the stuff I was reading on says the best time to view it is from uh, 3 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock. Um, and that's because of the rotation of the Earth and the way it's coming through. And the way that uh, the meters, because uh, basically we're coming into it, like I'm coming towards you, and it's rotating. So that puts it at that time as being the best time to view it. Actually, because it's rotating. You have the sun's over here on my left, and the uh, and Earth's coming this way here, and we're rotating this way here. No, this way, towards the sun. So just before dawn is when we're going to pick up the most. Now, if the sun were to suddenly go out, we have a good. We would have a good showing up until what would be noontime. <clears throat> Some historical observations and associations in 1835, and I'm not going to try to uh, pronounce the, the Italian gentleman's name. Identified the shower as um, emanating from the constellation Perseus in. 1866, after the Periflon passage of the Swift Tuttle in 1862, the Italian astronomer 
Giovanni Virgino, Virginio, I can pronounce the last name, discovered the link between the meteor shower and the co and comets because, hey, the comet went by and all of a sudden, whoa, we got a whole bunch more, you know, big increase. So, all right, next uh, line here is, okay, so here we have the, map, the one of the maps I was talking about. Let me go ahead and make this totally big. So up here, we have the North Star. And so if you're looking up to the North Star, you're going to see Perseus here. Well, if you're down in the southern hemisphere, you're not going to catch much of it. You're going to catch a little bit of it, but not much. Because most of it's coming because of the way the path is. So let me go on here and show you it. So here's a backing out. So the North Star is up here. Here's Perseus. And here's the radiant area right here. And go for one more. There's another one showing. So you got Cassio Cassiopeia up here, Perseus, and you go on down to uh, Capella and some of the others. And there's your radiant point. Everybody has the drawings of the radiant point, trying to make it simpler and simpler. Okay. So um, this here kind of shows the, how the, the comet's trail goes this way here and out. And Earth's orbit is this way here. Now, this we're looking down on the orbit. So this thing coming around like this is not on the same plane as our orbit. That's how come it only hits during this uh, one uh, period here. There's another one. So this shows a little bit better. So the blue is the comet. It's trail. And then the orbit of the planets here. Where it gets to us here. Now, the next one here, there's the orbit. And so it shows this, gives it a little bit different view of it going around and how the, um, so if you're looking up from the sun, you look, we're at, at, looking at a 90 degree angle from the side. So Perseus is up over here and, and we go around it, we'll go into it here. And this shows uh, a lot better exactly how prolific the particles are from the comet. How big are some of are those particles? Some of them as big as my thumbnail. Others, golf ball size. Others, you know, some of them are, could be the size of a bowling ball. We're not talking planet killers here. This is the trailings off of a comet, folks, not a big meteor that broken up. These A lot of these are, are going to be ice, dirty ice crystals. So there is some dirt particles within it. But it's not that. So let me get over here. And there, I'm back on the side. So, yeah, so, you know, these particles here are not massive in size. And they're mostly, uh, and they're mostly, um, uh, water, you know, ice, you know, and little, and space dust and stuff like that. All righty. And here's one from from the, from the NBC in Los Angeles, show, their little thing of it showing all the particles and how the Earth travels through it. Plain and simple. That's a come we're getting bombarded. Basically, we're stepping through a a pathway of small meteors and like water drops. It's like going through a shower. Okay, that was another little drawing there. These are a bunch of stuff I found here. I'll show you where I can do it. But it, this one here lists, for those scientists saying you, lists the uh, orbit of the comet, Swift shuttle, the inclination of being 113 degrees off the flat plane. So, yeah. And here are some, here are some time-lapse photos, guys, of what you might see if you are up at 3 o'clock in the morning tonight and tomorrow night. So... Yeah, so these are time lapse of what's coming down, and this has been going on. You know, this is a couple days ago, and so it's increasing the, the closer we get to this, the mass center of the uh, the cloud here. Now here you got something going in different directions because 
they're just kind of floating around in there, orbiting around and stuff, you know, in in as it, in the pathway here. And some of them come at us. They, we get pulled by the gravity of the Earth at us from different directions. So, yeah, they're not, not all going to be going the same direction. But most of them will be or have a central point of origin in the sky. And here's a real long one from uh, yesterday that was posted of uh, the streaks. Now, all the dots are, are most of the dots are stars, but the streaks are what you want, are what's coming in. And I think that's the last one on that one. Yeah. So let me go over here. Put it down small. So now I can pay attention here. Let's see what's going on over here. Any more what comments are up here to take it on? Play catch up on the comments and the questions here, guys. Now I know uh, like here in California, um, in Martinez, um, we have the John Muir House and across Highway 4 from the John Muir House is, um, I just lost, I just had it on the tip of my tongue. Ah, the name of the hill. Hmm, can't think of it. Mount, uh, Mount Wanda, that's it, Mount Wanda. And um, tonight and tomorrow, the, the trails up to Mount Wanda early in the morning may have, it, it is open, it's not closed down due to the Red Dragon, so there may be a lot of people up there here. Now, we also have here, um, the that's to the east of us, the west of us, we have Mount Diablo, which is one of the biggest uh, peaks in California and looks out over a lot of flatlands and stuff. So that may also have a lot of uh, tours that are going up there. As far as I know, they opened that back up. But, they may, but according to Governor Nuisance, they may have had to close it down again. So let me just go ahead and go full size here and scare the heck out of everybody. Uh, turned it a little bit somewhere. All right. So basically, anyone is saying that um, this uh, meteor shower and the one coming up here next month, oh, we got to watch out for it. They're really dangerous. It's going to cause a problem for us. They're feeding you a line of, ho of uh, hokey baloney. It's, uh, it's not going to be bad. It's going to be very interesting to look at. In fact, hey, it's a good reason to go out there with a lawn chair a blanket and a camera and a pair of binoculars and just watch the sky. All right. All right. Everybody's still around. Okay. Any questions on it, guys? Now, unfortunately, I don't have a good enough video camera to go out there and record it. Otherwise, I would record it tonight and let you guys watch that. You know, I would show it tomorrow. But Okay, doing great. Oh, yeah. Ryan said he did not feel the 5.1 uh, earthquake earlier this week in North Carolina. Yeah, it was, you know that earthquake in North Carolina, even though it was a it was a 5.1 only 5.1. When I say only, hey, in California we get six and sevens, you know, all the time. But uh, one of the things that um, when I was looking at the shake map for that. It was it was felt in seven different states. Back there, it was felt down in, into Georgia, down into Florida, um, Alabama, Louisiana, up into West Virginia, West Virginia. So, so there's nothing to be anything like that from this meteor shower. Yeah, and there's a there's another there's a comet. A, you know, an asteroid passing next month, and hopefully Dave at Southern Ohio Prepping will have his new computer, and he'll be able to join me up with that one because he has a lot of data. You know, he was looking forward to this till his computer died. As we talked about this this one, the one next month, and then the one in December. Uh, really good meteor showers and asteroid passings. All 
All righty. Well, I hope there don't seem, don't seem to be many questions about it. So I hope everybody got some, I gave you some information, you know, uh, if it was a little boring, you want, you know, if you're not sure you want to watch, hey, just click on, uh, go to, uh, type it in and check on the Wikipedia site on it and check on the NASA site. I'll give you good information on this. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, so Cecilia's been watching Alaska Bush people and Ryan's been watching Shark Week on Discovery Channel. <laughs> And I've been repairing a fence. I'm going to have a video. I'm going to later start editing it tonight. We re, that one of the reasons I came back to California was um, in the in the spring we had some really strong winds and it blew over the fence on the uh, east side of the property. And my wife had propped it up with some T posts and kept it from falling over. And so we uh, yesterday we took down the five eight foot sections of the fence that was there and replaced it with new pa new paneled sections and it looks really nice so i'll have that hopefully i'll have that video out tomorrow morning do all my editing tonight get it all ready for that so yeah and oh yeah how he's been catching sharks food forest permaculture He's done some good. He's he, he's grilled up some shark uh, steaks up there. Uh, if you want to check that out? Check out uh, how we food for, forest permaculture. All right, and checking that. How is it in your holiday with the wife? <laughs> well, let's see. Um, we. Uh, we're pulling a lot of stuff out of shop. We pulled, found uh, a lot of my mom's canning jars that we had been packed away upstairs um, in the loft above the shop. And we've been pulling those out. I've been running those through the dishwasher and packing them in those 27 gallon totes you can get at Sam's Club or uh, Home Depot. And then she went down day before you on sunday afternoon she went down to see her mom hey sean it's sean in alaska she went down to see my um her, see her mother down in fremont and her mother gave her a whole bunch more canning jars two pressure cookers a, a water bath canner or you know the pressure cooks actually like, uh, pressure canners so um we've been cleaning those up i'm taking those back up to my daughter up in idaho and now the ones you have a one of the ones around here should have a real good view of the this meteor shower. That should be Sean, and Sean that should be about three o'clock in the morning for you, um, unless you got too much light up there. But uh, the the peak time they say for most of the northern hemisphere is about is from three to six o'clock in the morning. So, and so basically, I got. Um, Three of those 27-gallon totes packed full of bottles, an other one packed half full, and about 12 cases of quart jars and pint jars sitting on the uh, front porch to load up in the truck uh, tomorrow evening. Still dark at 3 a.m.? Good. Perfect. If it's still dark at 3 a.m. there, uh, Sean, you should get a good view of the uh, meteor shower tonight. Uh, ten, uh, Three o'clock uh, um, tonight, tomorrow morning, and then three o'clock tomorrow night into the next morning should be have some really good uh, views of it, especially tonight, though, from what I'm reading here. All righty, folks. Uh, not much discussion on here, so and I got all the information out I wanted to give you guys on it. So if you see any other videos saying, "Oh, this is, this is you, know, you know," you can just comment on. You're full of baloney. This happens. This happens every year. It's been going on for thousands of years. It ain't nothing big. It's just a nice. It's just a nice, pretty show in the sky. All right, folks. Um, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and sign off here, but I want to remind everybody, stay happy, stay prepared, and we'll see you in the next video. And um, check out uh, Uncle Al at Die, Bull Fro Die Bullfrog 79 1L in Bull. 
and he's got some good uh, videos he put out this week on prepping on food and stuff. And um, Reed at Manifestations of Imagination put out a couple really good videos. He had a really good analytical video of the um, Beirut explosion. He had lots of uh, video footage on it, and he was showing out. He was showing the two concussion blasts, one right behind the other, like microsecond apart. So check it out, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, guys? Take care, and 